We're going to pick up now where we left off in the previous video. In the previous video, I did some flying sort of around the house, picked out some trouble areas, and sort of sat the copter right in those trouble areas to see how the different modules stacked up. But uh, the thing about that testing is that a lot of that testing, you get an okay signal with just a regular clover leaf, and so trying to pick out which one was slightly better or slightly worse might not have been as clear. In this one, I'm going to fly down the road. Well, you know what? I'm just going to let Joshua from the past tell you all about it. And then the other thing that I did is I went and I stood by my mailbox. I use that as my sort of reference point. So I stand in the same place every time. I stood by my mailbox and I flew down this road, all the way down this road to the very end of the road this way. And then I turned around and I flew back. And that's about 650 feet or just under 200 meters. I checked that one. I had the antenna, the, the, the directional antenna, the patch antenna, aimed down the street, and I was very, very careful not to move my head during that testing. So I kept the antenna pointed in that direction. And uh, then what I did as I flew back was I continued to fly past myself, and I flew up the street this way. And of course, since I'm behind myself, now I will diversity switch over to the cloverleaf antenna because the directional antenna is going to be very weak in that direction. So I did not turn and face that direction. That would just be repeating the same test. So then I flew as far as I could behind myself up this direction. And this is a little more challenging. You can see that if I'm standing here, as I go around this way, we get some trees in the way here. And then if I get past this turn in the road, there's definitely some trees in this way. So just see how far I could get that way before the video broke up. Okay, those are the main tests that I performed. Now let's take a look at the results and see how each of the modules did. So what you're going to see is that I've sped up the initial part of the flight where the video is just fine. As we get further out, I go down to 2x speed, which is what you're seeing here. And as we get to the very end where the breakup is the worst, you get to 1x speed. My decision of when to turn around was entirely subjective. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. I think there was one case where I could have done a little better job, and I want to, I'll acknowledge it at the end of the video. I flew out just until I felt like the breakup was to the point where I just didn't feel comfortable flying through it, uh, and I turned around and came back. I also took into account that when flying back, the antenna would be behind the copter and the signal would get worse. So the signal is going to be better going out and worse coming back. So if you notice that the point where I turn around and you're going, well, he could have probably kept flying. Yeah, I could have kept flying out, but then the minute I turn around, I might have been in total breakup, and I didn't, I didn't want to walk all the way down the road to pick up my dang copter, so... As you watch the testing, you're going to see that I freeze-framed particularly bad glitches, and that's not necessarily to show you how bad the glitch is, just to call out to you what I noticed while I was flying, and and, and also what influenced me to turn around. You'll see I go back out, out again and turn around again for the next wave, because I did want to make sure that I was flying out, and I hadn't, I hadn't turned around prematurely, and I decided that, no, it was fine. Right here, you may wonder why I landed the copter. I didn't land the copter. This is the world's least dramatic failsafe. I did have a failsafe. I landed, I took off again, I reoriented the antenna, and I was on my way. Bear in mind that for this part of the testing, pretty much all of the modules got all the way to the end of the street. So the distance is roughly equivalent, and you're going to want to look at the video quality right here, where the copter has turned around, the antenna is behind the copter, and the copter is coming back. Look for which module has the best video quality here. For the second half of the test, after I fly past myself and go down the other side of the street, not all of the modules made it the same distance. So don't just look at how good or bad the signal is at the moment that I turn around, but pay attention to how far down the road I got. Some of the modules got much further than others.
As you watch the Clearview testing, you must take into account that the Clearview is not intended to be used as a diversity receiver. It can be used, but that's not how it's intended to be used. The intent is that the Clearview will be used with two identical antennas on it. So right now, the Clearview is using a cloverleaf antenna. It does not have the 8 dBi patch that the others were using. So if you're looking at this and you're going, oh, that looks about the same as the others, then realize it looks the same with a 6 dB handicap. And in case you don't understand, you don't have a perspective on what that means, in RF propagation, a gain or loss of 6 dB equates to a doubling or halving of range. So 6 dB is pretty substantial. If the Clearview can make up a 6 dB handicap, that means you would get double or half the range in any given direction. All right, well that's two of three now you've seen. You've seen the flying around the house and you've seen the straight out and back range test. Just like before, I'm gonna withhold my opinions until the last video, the third video, which is coming up tomorrow. And I'm gonna give you my opinions on what I think were, were best, worst, and, and just the whole big picture. Because there's more to this than just RF performance. There's, there's the features, there's the build quality, there's price, and etc. So I got one more video where I'm gonna give you my conclusions and to point out a few things that I haven't told you yet, a few small things that might affect your decision. There, I said that there was one other thing that I had to acknowledge uh, with regard to sort of the subjective nature of this testing. And, and here's what it is. The next wave module went first, just cause it did. I thought it would be the baseline of, of, from which the others would be measured. So I tested it first. And when I did the flying down the street and back test, I, I don't fly over my neighbors. I don't fly anywhere except on my property because I don't want to be that guy who drops a, a drone on his neighbor's yard or, or something worse, right? So when I was flying down the street, I was, I was a little nervous. Like what if a car comes? What if somebody's walking? I don't know. I was going real slow and I was trying to be really careful. And the minute that next wave glitched, the first like full screen glitch, I went, okay, turn it around, turn it around. As I got more confident, I pushed, I feel like, uh, and I didn't notice this when I was doing the testing, but I, I noticed it when I was doing the editing. I feel like I definitely pushed the other modules further. And and I the next wave probably could have done a little better than it did. Um, so I didn't, so then why didn't I go back and rerun the next wave tests, right? Which would have been the sort of like super scientific responsible thing to do. And the simple answer is time. I'm, I'm up against a time crunch. I'm about to go out of town on a, a family vacation and I just, I needed to get these videos out and I just didn't have time to go back and do it. But also if it had been any of the other modules, I would have felt really obligated to give them a fair shake. But I mean, the next wave, it doesn't have diversity. It doesn't have any of the other features that the others bring to the table. And like, so kind of, I feel like it's sort of the, the budget baseline. And I was kind of surprised to hear people in the first video saying, oh, I'll just stick with the next wave. And it's like, well, if I think if you're gonna stick with the next wave, then the, you're probably just gonna stick with the next wave. And the fact that I think we can acknowledge that it's not gonna go as far as the others. It may be close, it may be closer than I got it, but it's not gonna go as far. Um, so I don't know. If I was unfair to the next wave and you feel like that was inappropriate, then you can lambast me in the comments and maybe at another time we'll revisit that. But I do wanna acknowledge, if you watched the next wave video and you said, he didn't go very, he didn't go as far. There wasn't enough breakup, he could have kept flying. I kind of feel the same way too. And if I'm not gonna fix it, all I can do is acknowledge it. And there you go. Anyway, that's it. Look for the next video tomorrow. I'm going to record it right now, but I'm not showing it to you till tomorrow. And uh, then, then you'll know everything you need to know about these modules to make an informed buying decision, right? I hope so. Happy flying. <laughs>